we are live now on YouTube. Okay. Shubintar is a practice. Fine, thank you, sir. <laughs> it's all going on well. That's, that's interesting. Yes, sir. The Tubutura is about to become proc now. So we're also following his footsteps. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Okay, it's time, Bob. It's nine o'clock, yes. Yeah, so we can um, start? Okay. Yes, yes. Let me introduce you, sir. Good morning, okay. all senior colleagues and colleagues. My name is Dr. Lamba Bintu from El Hatu Arab Specialist Hospital Lafia. I welcome you all to this fortnight academic session. We apologize for the hitches we had last weekend. We're going to be having a presentation on the first part of OCT interpretation in glaucoma by Dr. Sadiq Abdullahi, who is a mentor and a teacher to many of us here, a glaucoma specialist from National Eye Center, Kaduna. We welcome you, sir. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Okay. Bintu. Um, yes, I also want to apologize for what happened last week is due to some technical issues that we couldn't resolve on time. But anyway, good time is always the best. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to talk about OCT interpretations in glaucoma, which I know many of you are used to. Um, I think most centers have OCT now, or if you don't have OCT, you have access to it. So by, by way of introduction, glaucoma is an optic neuropathy that is characterized by progressive loss of retinal ganglion cells and their axons. And the diagnosis of glaucoma is based on detection of abnormalities in optic nerve head or retinal fiber layer, both structurally and functionally. Now, in glaucoma, damage occurs uh, structurally before functionally. And then uh, DBT is one of those methods. Now, but for the purpose of glaucoma evaluation, um, in the OCT, we're interested in three areas. One, peripapillary retinal fiber layers, the optic nerve head and the ganglion cell complex. Most of the OCT machine, the Cyrus OCT, the trisonder, up to look, the spectralis, all of them, they, pre, they, 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 pre, they, they give um, information about these features. Now, and this is one example. This is what I'm talking about. Um, we talk about the optic nerve head, the retinal peripapillary, peripapillary uh, retinal fiber layer, and then the macular ganglion cell are complex. Now, why uh, OCT is important because it helps us to diagnose preperimetric glaucoma, and this is type of glaucoma in which patient has high pressure but visual field is normal, and there is usually associated um, retinal fiber layer depict or some early signs of um, glaucomatous optic neuropathy. So OCT is key in the diagnosis of preperimetric glaucoma, and of course also in early glaucoma. And also, uh, most importantly, is in 
assessment of glaucoma progression. So therefore, OCT is no one-off investigation. It is investigation that should be performed serially in order to detect uh, if there is any um, progression structurally before it becomes functional. But then um, the retina family analysis in most OCT machines is presented in this format. It presents information about retina fiber layer thickness map, retina fiber layer de um, deviation map, TSNIF graft, global mean of retina of retina fiber layer thickness. Then they give quadratic measurement and 12 clock hours measurement. I will show that. Now, this is what I'm thinking about almost all OCT machines, spectral domains OCT machine. They give these information. This is the um this is the retina fiber layer map. This is the deviation map, and this is the TN. Uh, and this is the uh, uh, this this is the TSIF. <laughs> I don't know. This is <laughs> anyway. So this is this is what I'm thinking about. It compares the retina fiber layer between the two eyes across the different quadrants of the optic nerve head. And then this is the quadrantic distribution. It gives you the average retina fiber layer thickness in the superior, imperial, um, nasal, and temporal quadrants. And then this is the quadrantic distributions. And then this will give you now the mean, the mean of the retina fiber layer of the patient. So this, this one, two, three, four, Four, five, the digital photo, and then the thickness map, and then the deviation map, and then it gives you the the graph here, and then also it gives the, the quadratic distribution, and then the clock hour distribution. I'll come and talk about them later. Okay, now how do you interpret OCT? The sequence you start with signal strength. Signal strength is very important because. Um, you want uh, every machine, the manufacturers have recommended signal strength below which the scan is termed as having a low signal strength. And when the signal strength is low, it introduces some artifact in the interpretations of the visual pill. I will show the values for the different machines later. Now, this is the second part. So when you look at, and the one important thing that you need to look at in this OCT is that you see this OD, it shows some, some green cycles here. Now, this means the signal strength is good. If it's not good, this place will be in red. This will be in red, not in green, and it's shown here. So after you are satisfied with the signal strength, the next area you need to look at is the retina fiber layer thickness map. In a normal individual, this is the graphic presentation of the retina fiber layer. Now in a normal individual, it has a butterfly pattern. So it has a butterfly pattern. And now if you look at this one, now the next one is a deviation map. What this one does is that it gives you the difference between what the patient has and what he should have, the age match control. And now the difference, now if the patient's result is within the normal range like this one there is no defect here so you won't see anything here but if you look at here there is some red dot here so now this is this area now is the area of thinning so in other words um the deviation map it will show you area of retina fiber layer loss now it's coded whether it is yellow which is borderline or it is red which is um outside the borderline or outside normal now the next is this one now. Now this one, it shows um, the, we were all aware of the isn't rule. So now, but this one, it is telling you the retina fiber layer in the inferior, in the temporal, in the temporal, spherical, imperial, nasal, and spherical quadrant. So now, but what, uh, uh, if you look at this, it has a part,
I have a, a straight line and I say dotted lines and the straight line is the right eye while the dotted line is the left eye. Now you compare how the two eyes, as they are moving across the graph, you consider, you, you, you compare the, similar, the similarity between the two graphs. Now in the eye that has more loss, you will see that it will be more down on the graph. Now, and as you can see, this is a normal scan. Everything is within the green zone. And we know that the green zone is the normal zone. Now, the yellow is the, um, now the yellow is, is the borderline where the rate is outside the normal. So the next area to look in the OCT, after you look at these three area, now the next is, so, so, so now the next is to look at this. This is the neuroretinal rim between the two, eyes you can see like the retinal fiber the different this one is the thickness of neural retinal rim i would also know that from the easing rule you should expect to have some double home this is imperial this is superior and also compare the two between the right eye and the left eye as if you can see in this one the left eye is a little bit lower here but spirally they are almost the same, and imperially here they are also imperially and spirally here they are also the same. And this is the part of the graph that follows that is in true because the information is about neuroretinal rim. Now the next area to look at is the B scan of the optic nerve head. Now, what is the the essence of this? The essence of this is to know that the OCT software has accurately mapped out the limit of the optic nerve head from which all other measurements are taken. Now, if you look at it here now, there are two colors. I don't know whether you can see there's a black color here and now there is um, a red here. This is the internal limited membrane and this is the brooch membrane. And then one thing I want you people to understand is that the cup dix ratio in OCT is not the same as the cup dix ratio we see with our optic nerve uh, with um, direct ophthalmoscope or, in the, or, with, or using indirect ophthalmoscope. Using indirect ophthalmoscopes, we look at the margin of the dicks vis-a-vis -vis the cup, not talk about CDR. But in OCT, it used the brooch membrane. So everything, so, so the OCT, the software has to clearly outlined the brooch membrane. And then in this one, it has, it's, you, you want to check the good segmentations because if you, um, um how, what the OCT does is that it isolates the retinal fiber layer and measure it. So you have to be sure that yes, it has accurately um isolated the retinal fiber layer and the information you are getting is the next one. So now um in this 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 quadratic distribution is telling you the retinal fiber layer in the superior, imperial, nasal, and temporal quadrants. And now Sometimes it's very good to compare the numbers between, okay, for example, you can compare imperial and imperial in the right eye and imperial in the left eye. You can compare superior in the right eye and superior in the left eye to look at asymmetry. So one thing about inter OCT interpretation is that you should be looking at these parameters and comparing them from right to the left eye. Now this is one example of um, Cyrus OCT. That show look at colors. Now if you look at this color toward the zero, you can see how the color looks something like blue, but up there is green. So what it means is that these are thicker areas where you see the blue and the yellow are the thicker areas, but you can see a streak of you can see a, a, a streak of a thin area here, and then again you also look at butterfly pattern in the two eyes. Is there is there a loss of the um, butterfly pattern? And then from there I now look at the the next is the deviation um, map. So you can see from the deviation map, um, you can see some areas of thinning. And one of the advantage of the deviation map is that it gives you information beyond the, the 3.0 millimeter cycle that the normal uh, measurement of OCT are taking. So you can see if there is any defect here, it will show. I have other um, uh, graph to show. So now you can now see here again what I'm thinking about. Um, as you can, so after 
after the uh, the thickness map, the deviation map, and the next you go to the TSNIF, uh, TNSIF um, graph. As you can see here, as as you can see here, you know this this is superior. It's supposed to be uh, this is supposed to be from imperial superior. If you look, if you remember the Asian truth, although this is letter now five layer, it does not completely follow the Asian truth. But usually the imperial and the superior tend to be higher. But as you can see here, there are some some loss here. And now, if you look at this one also, you can see this this value is about ninety millimeter and, and ninety micrometer. And look at this, you can see it's about ninety seven. So you can see from here, from starting from here, you can see a defect here, which is reflected here. And you can also see some localized defect here. And then you are seeing it here uh, being um, demonstrated. And then, of course, you, you shouldn't forget to look at the mean, <coughs> the absolute uh, the mean of the retinal fiber layer in the left versus the right eye. I'll be, you look at the measurements. And then the same thing here also, you can see some area of Different. Now, this is a patient who this, this is a patient with advanced disease. So you can see the right and the left eye already. There is a loss of the um, butterfly pattern. And if you look at going by this color coding, you will see that uh, all the areas surrounding the optic nerve are within this lower limit. And also in this, uh, you don't see the red and the blue around this area. You only see the 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 blue down. So which means there's already diffuse loss of um, neuroretinal rim in both the right and the left eye. So the diffuse loss of the retinal fiber layer. Now, in the deviation map, the deviation map will outline those. It will show the areas where the defect occurs. As you can see here, there are superior and inferior defect. You can see all these red areas. You can see all those red areas. They are areas of loss or areas of thinning of the neuroretinal rim because the difference between the red here is different from the red here the red here it means thick area but this is a difference between what the patient has and then um what the patient should have and now that if everything is normal you won't see any color but if the difference is large it will be coded as either um yellow which is borderline or it's red which is outside the normal limit and again again also Uh, if you look at the, the graph here, you will see that everything is down in both the right and the left eye are down. So there's lots of the, of, of, of the double hump. Everything is down here within the, the red zone. And then of course, here also, if you look at the quadrantic distribution, all the measurements are low. This is for the three, this is for three also. And also in the clock hour distribution. So basically it shows you that there's diffuse loss in um, this scan. Now this is, um, this is, now if you look at this here, um, you see this is the optic nerve head and this is the butterfly pattern. And then this is the deviation map. So in this one, everything looks normal. There is no any red or yellow area here. So this looks normal. And then if you come down here, you can now uh, look at the, then, then you can now look at this graph also. And then move here, you can see that, um, you, you can see the, the quadrantic distribution of the retinal fiber layer thickness, the superior, the imperial, everything is appearing in green here. But if you look at this one here, you can, if you look at this one here, you can see there's some areas of loss in the spirotemporal sites. And of course, when you see this in the spirotemporal site, when you come here, you also look at the graph. You compare the two between the left and the right eye as it goes up and down along the graph. And then also you look at here, you see this are, uh, areas of loss. So in this case, you need to quickly see the CBF. Now, if the CBF is normal and the patient has higher prejudice on an example of 
preperimetric glaucoma. So what about the optic nerve head? What I have mentioned earlier are all about the rectal nerve fiber layer. And then what about the optic nerve head? Now, the parameters of the optic nerve head depends on the machines you are dealing with. Now, these are the different type of OCT machine, Spectralis, Cyrus OCT, Optizoop, tip, um, Popcorn, Nidec. Now, if you are using Cyrus, which most people have, it's the optic nerve parameters, it gives information about the optic area, uh, the cuff volume, the CDR, the vertical CDR, and then the rim area. But if you're using Topcon, Topcon give information about the Dix area, the cup area, the cup volume, the vertical cup Dix ratio, the horizontal cup Dix ratio, and the rim area. But one thing you see consistent about all of them is they give information about the rim area because of its importance in diagnosis and assessment of progression in patients with glaucoma. And all of them also give information about CDR. And then all of them also give information about DIX area. So these are very important parameters in assessment of glaucoma and its progression. Now this is Cyrus OCT. As you can see, these are the parameters. These are the rim area in the right and the left eye, and then the DIX area, then the abreast CDR, and then the vertical CDR and the cubic ratio. And it also gives information about the neuroretinal rim. So neuroretinal rims are actually parts of um the o o o onh parameters when it comes into interpretation of oct and this is the this is the triton oct which is popcorn and you can also see it give the the rim area the dix area and also the vertical cup dix ratio and the the cuff volume now of all these parameters, areas of neuroretinal rim and vertical CDR are the most sensitive parameters for glaucoma detection and progression analysis. And another important area that you need to look at when you're assessing this, especially in a patient with glaucoma suspect, is the DIX area. Whether the DIX is small, less than two, or it is large, greater than 2.5. And it affects the other parameters. So the, the third thing we look at in glaucoma, remember I said we look at the retinal nerve fiber layer, we look at optic nerve head, then the last one we look in in, in OCT with regards to glaucoma is uh, macular ganglion cell complex analysis. Now we know that uh, the, the, the main pathology in, in glaucoma is, um, is the degeneration of retinal ganglion cells. And we are all aware that the highest concentration of retinal ganglion cells are found in the fovea. And therefore, it makes sense if we can have a means of assessing the retinal ganglion cells as indicator of severity of glaucoma or as indicators of the presence of, of glaucoma. Unfortunately, we cannot assess ganglion cells directly, but uh, they have come up with this ganglion cell complex, which actually includes the innermost layers of the retina, which are the retinal fiber layer, the ganglion cell layer and the inner plex form layer. So these are taken as surrogates of the ganglion cells. And one of the advantage of this thing is that it is one of the advantage of um one of the advantage of this ganglion cell complex analysis is that it is devoid of confounding effect of optic disk variability. It doesn't matter whether the size of whether the disk is small or the disk is large. And also another important of ganglion cells complex is that in early detections of glaucoma, in early detections of glaucoma, ganglion cells are the one that are affected early before you see it in the um, retinal nerve fiber layer and the CDR. And also in patients with advanced glaucoma, that is what we call flow effects. And, and in those, um, because um, as the glaucoma damage um, progresses and the retinal nerve fiber layer uh, reach thickness, reach, um, reach a, a certain critical level. Any further progressions cannot be detected by the machine, but ganglion cell complex um, can be detected as the disease progresses. And then also in patients with myopia, in patients with peripapillary atrophy, um, you can resort to the ganglion cell complex for, for, for the diagnosis and progression of glaucoma in this category of patients. And now this is what I'm talking about. They look at the innermost layer of the retina, the retina fiber layer, ganglion cell layer, inner flexible layer. Now it depends. Some machines have different combination. 
Now, if you're using Cyrus OCT, which is the Zeiss, they use um, ganglion cell plus inner flux form layer alone. But if you're using Topcon, they give two variables. One, GSL++. plus plus. GSL++ plus plus, GS, GCL++ plus plus connotes retina fiber layer, ganglion cell layer, and inner flux form layer. Well, GCL++, plus, it detects ganglion cell layer plus inner plug from layer where other OCT machines like Spectralis Heidelberg engineering they measure the individual layer now this is an example of um the macular OCT of um of, from Cyrus OCT now another thing this one also it give the math of the thickness of the ganglion cell layer, ganglion cell complex. Now the normal they have should have a donut shape. Have a donut shape. And also remember it also this has color coding. Now you can see this is as it's moving toward this blue, it means loss. It's going higher toward the red side. It means they are more healthier. Now if you look at this one, you will see that around this area there is loss of the um, thickness. There is loss of the ganglion cell complex around this area, and this area tend to be healthier. And now this one is a deviation map, so it tells you the defect area of the defect in the. So this is like the deviation uh, map in um, ganglion cell complex, and these are the areas of defect in this one. Now, if you can see this one. This seem to be a little bit healthier. You can see more areas of yellow mixed with some area of red. And therefore, you can see the defect here is not as extensive as here. So the defect is not as extensive as here. And it also give a quadratic distribution of the defect, as you can see here. It also give you the average of the ganglion cell complex in the right and the left eye. And also, it's very important also the centration. Talk about that later. Now, if you are using Triton OCT, like I said, it gives three. So in Triton OCT, this is retina fiber layer. This is GLC plus. This is retina fiber layer thickness alone. This is retina fiber. This is ganglion cells plus inner flex form layer. That's GLC plus. And now this is GLC plus plus ganglion cell, um, retina ganglion cell layer, inner flux form layer, plus retina fiber layer. And like in the previous uh, graph, it also followed the donut shape. And it also followed this uh, color coding. As you can see, toward this side, it's an area of loss. And as you see, go to the yellow and the green, it means they are normal area. So you can see in this one, that's completely everything is lost here. So you can see the diffuse. Um, loss of the um, retina fiber layer thickness in the macular area. And then in this one, you can also see the defect outline and also defect outline. And you can see it gives you, um, it gives you the superior and the imperial value, and then it gives you the total. So this is very important in early and in advanced disease. OCT is like any other imaging, it can be affected by artifacts that can compromise the readings. Now, the common one is the signal strength. Every machine, like I said earlier, it has um, it has a value. Now look at this, this is the cutoff value. Now, if you're using Cyrus OCT, the signal strength has to be more than 60. If you're using Triton, more than 35. If you're using Spectralis, more than 30. If you are using X advantage more than people, like I said, the good thing is that the machine will tell you by itself that there is low signal strength. And the commonest cause of signals, poor signal strength is media opacity, cataract, and then other form of opacity like vitreous opacity, and even um, corneal edema. Now, this is important. This is a, a very significant error because it gives false thin measurement of the retinal fiber layer, ganglion inner plex form layer, and ganglion cell. Now, this is OCT of the same patient taken on the same day. Now you can see the first scan shows 
poor signal strength. And you can see all the loss, all these red areas, the true area of loss. But now I ask them to dilate the patient a little bit and repeat the scan. And now this is what I'm getting. So you can see this is with low signal strength of 32. I remember I told you now, you can see this is green, green. This is red, red. So the machine itself will tell you, once you see red, it's like alarming you. This is poor signal strength. So everything becomes thin here. But the same patient, now everything becomes green. So erroneously, if you look at this one without looking at those parameters, you can quickly go ahead and say the patient has advanced glaucoma or the patient has pre-perimetric glaucoma and start the patient some medications. Meanwhile, this one, artifact. Now, another thing is, you see, look at this. Look at this one. You see, this one is perfectly centered, and this one is decentered. So this is what we call decentration error. This should be centered. It should be centered. So when you look at, although the patient has um, good signal strength, but this one is compromised by the decentration. So the result of this slide, I cannot be reliable. But you can see this one. And even this one, you can see on artifact here, this is called blinking artifact. When the patient is blinked, and that was when um, the, the something was, was taken. And that's what's showing here. Now, if you look at this one carefully also, you will see that the, if you look at this Kundal photo, you will see that it's not, the, there's no complete cycle here. The optic nerve here is not completely outlined. And this is what, this is reflected here. And if you look at, if you look at the butterfly pattern here and compare with this one, you can, this is like half pattern. And you can see this dark band here also. So this, this this one is also um as a result of um motion artifact and blinking artifact but if you can see this one is also another form of disintegration and therefore did look at this results and look at other everything looks normal so but this one now cannot be so we repeated this result and this is how it comes out now this is the same patient now when we repeat it and this is how it becomes so everything now become normal so um this is what i have for you um oct is an integral component of glaucoma progressions like i said it's just um one part of the presentation we can also use oct to assess for glaucoma progressions but also there's also place of oct on geography in glaucoma and then anterior segment oct in glaucoma diagnosis so these are other products of it that need to be discussed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for this very elaborate and rich presentation. Okay. We really appreciate it. We entertain questions and comments. Please, you can indicate by raising up your hand or you can type in the chat box. Thank you. So there's no question. Question to YouTube. Okay.
Dr. Bean? I've been muted. Dr. Kwanaki, please, you can ask your question. Hello, Dr. Ibrahim. So I think we can start taking. I can't see the questions. Did anybody type? I think somebody raised up his hand, so I'm trying to make him. But if somebody type, how can the B scan in OCT help in diagnosis of glaucoma? So, so what I'm saying is that the B scan it will help you to know whether uh, the OCT software has clearly delineated the margin of the optic nerve head for assessment. Because what the machine does is that it first of all isolates and demarcate the whole of the optic nerve head and the internal um, limiting membrane. I mean, that means um, it has the, from the beginning, the outside to the innermost part of the optic nerve head. And then from there, it now calculates the cop dix ratio, it now cop calculates the retina fiber layer thickness and other things. So if the first outline is not properly done, then certainly, you need to then the, now if the if the first outline is not perfectly done then all other measurement taking would be wrong and it should not be um correct and that is why step by step assessment or step by step um assessment of the optic nerve uh, of the um oct scan is important you wouldn't do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. How reliable is vertical computation in OCT? Since it is a um, how reliable is vertical cup dix ratio in OCT? Since it is a more objective measurement when compared to our own observation by CDR. Of course, one of the one of the advantage of those measurement OCT is that they are objective, they are reproducible, unlike um optic, unlike um the one we take using um during clinical evaluations that is really subjective and has a high inter-observer variability. So it's, it, it is more reliable and it's actually more correct because it measures, it doesn't include the DIX in the assessment of the cup dix ratio. It, 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 it starts from where the, the nerve enter into the, the, uh, the brooch membrane. So, so that's it. And then you see one thing about all of these parameters, when you come to glaucoma progression, that is what the machine used to Assess for progression. So these three areas that I mentioned: the retinal periphery, the optic nerve head, and the ganglion cell complex. All the parameters in this one, the machine will take them over time. If the patient has three or more readings, it will automatically generate progressions using one of them, each one of them. But before you do that, you must ensure a good quality scan. The one that has good um, signal strength, no disintegration error, no any of, of, of artifacts, and it's well demarcated.
how does periperfery return of fiber layer traction affect? Of course, it affects it because it will not. Um, it will not. The machine cannot accurately. Uh, I think we lost them. He's trying to join us again. I just chatted with him.
Is he still trying to join? Yes, please. I even call him now. Okay. He's back. Hello, sir. You need to unmute your mic so that we can read out the questions. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Dr. Bintu, can you read the questions from the chat? Okay. All right. Okay. The I think we stopped at um um in early glaucoma. Which of these parameters is best to consider? Okay. Is it the G the GCL and the IPL, the optic nerve head, and the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness, or the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness? Okay, okay, okay. But you see, um, what happened is that generally in glaucoma, the retinal fiber layer, the retinal fiber layer, it is the assessment of retinal fiber layer is like a surrogate measure of the ganglion cell. So in early glaucoma, all of them are important. But if you're thinking about which one is the most important, then I will tell you the ganglion cell complex is more important because sometimes you can pick defect there before it appears on the um, the peripapillary retinal fiber layer. And then even before it appears on the CDR. So if you're thinking about single most important is ganglion cell complex, but they are all important in the diagnosis of early glaucoma. Okay. Um, then please um, more explanation on the graph which line is for the right and the color coding so in the question? example of yes in, in respect to the graph which line is for the right and the color coding then in the example of the patient that had improved oct results with dilatation is sorry yes yeah. with dilatation of the pupil could you confirm if it was due to small size pupil or media opacity? 
Yeah, both of them can cause, um, both of them can actually cause poor signal strength. If the pupil is small or there is some form of media of opacity. So any one of them can give rise to um, poor signal strength. But in this case, it's most likely probably due to the poor mediasis. But the most important thing is that you know you need to know how poor signal strengths affect the quality of the readings. You can erroneously diagnose somebody as being glaucomatous when it's actually not. And so that's, this now brings the issue of use of OCT in the presence of media opacity. And even if you do, that's why if you do cataract surgery in a patient, you need to repeat the OCT now to see to get the new uh, baseline. So if you are doing glaucoma progression analysis using OCT, and then the patient in the process had, let's say, combined surgery, either FACO, plus trabeculectomy, or trap plus SICS, and you now want to do your assessment, then you have to start, the, your baseline should be now after the surgery to get a correct um, measurement of the retinal fiber layer, especially in situations where the um, signal strength is affected. There, there are actually there are actually other form of um, there are actually other form of um, artifact that you can see in OCT. I was able to get only these two from our patients: the 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 the, the, the poor signals and then the disintegration. There's also a segment segmentation mm -hmm. errors, and there are also um, motion artifact. These two, they are the, the one I did not um, indicate the graph, but they are also there. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so another question is, what's the meaning of shifted retinal nerve fiber layer bundle? No, no, that one is um, it's just from where I get that um, the, the 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 OCT printout is from a book. But if you look at the mm -hmm. one that's I actually get from my own patients. The one, the second graph, it doesn't show that. So it's it's really I don't know what it means, but um, it's not a standard terminology. Okay, then what is the numeric value for the signal strength below which it is unreliable? I think you gave us a table on this one, depending yeah, on the machines. There is a table for every machine. Yes, it depends okay. on the machines. It depends yes. on the machines. And those values are set by the manufacturers themselves. That's okay. if, you are, if, you are, if you are is using size, it should be more than six. If you are using um, Triton OCT, it should be more than more than 35. So these are the OCT machines that I'm used to. For these ones, I know. And even if you don't cram it, the machine will show you. If you see it, it will show that um, there's poor signal strength. Okay. So there's no need to cram anything here. Okay. Anything, okay. okay. Then how does peripapillary vitro retinal traction affect OCT? How does... Peripapillary vitro retinal traction affect OCT. Thank you. Let me answer that question because what happens is that when there is vitro, when there is um, vitro macular traction, it will pull on the retinal nerve fiber layer. Now, when the OCT machine is trying to identify the internal limiting membrane. Now it will identify it at a higher position because it has already been pulled outward by the vitromacular traction. And because it is in a position that is not supposed to be, the machine doesn't know, will not say it's because of, of the of the vitroretinal tract. So it's just add that difference from where the retinal fiber layer is to the to, 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 to the bridge membrane. So it gives an abnormally thicker um value of the retinal nerve fiber layer. But the good thing is that if you look at OCT machine, you will see those traction actually pulling the the, the internal limiting membrane. So it, it does affect it. It gives a false thickness. It, 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 it possibly increases the thickness of the retinal nerve fiber layer. Okay. Then, yeah. um, please, uh, um, does high refractive errors or astigmatism affect the signal strength in OCT? It, it, it's not affecting the signal strength per se, but it affects 
the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. And that is why okay. value plus minus five, plus minus five, in in my ops, it in in my ops, it decreases the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. In hyper -op, it increases the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. I think it's something like like that. Mm -hmm. So um high refractive errors, small disc diameter or large disc diameter, they both affect um the measurement of the um retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. And that is why in those categories of patients you can refer back to the ganglion cell complex because the ganglion cell complex is not affected by by any variability of our thickness. And then why is this affecting it is because you know my they have a larger disc and the OCT has a fixed cycle, 3.04 millimeter. Now it it placed it at the center of the disc. If the disc is small, now the, 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 from the margin of the cycle to the margin of disc will be white. And we know that as we move away from the optic nerve head, the thickness of the nerve is actually um, decreasing, they are more spread out, so it will be smaller. But if somebody is a myo with a larger disc, now the cycles or the demarcations um, from where the measurement are taken will be closer to the disc margins. And therefore, so, so, sorry, so that means well, what I stand there is, is, is like if the disc is large, it gives abnormally um, thick retina fiber layer, but the disc is small, it gives abnormally thin retinal fiber layer. So the same thing is the patient size for who, who have um, high, um, high uh, who, who have smaller dicks, will have abnormally thin retinal fiber layer. If they are myop with the large dicks, they have abnormally. And I remember again, the myop also, they have peripapillary atrophy. Now, those temporal treatment that we see in, 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 in myop can also um, affect the OCT reading. The reading. And that is why I say you can depend on now you can you can refer back to the ganglion cell complex, provided again they don't have macular degeneration. So interpretation of OCT in in in, in somebody with myopia can actually be affected by someone. Even if they have still cell disc, so they have still cell disc can also affect the reading. So if somebody is myop with a large disc, still cell disc, you can rely on the ganglion cell complex, provided there is no um macular degeneration. That is why generally diagnosing glaucoma in, in my is more technical. Okay. Yeah. Okay, another question is since there is no normative data for um, ages under 18, is it contraindicated to do OCT in individuals, especially those around 15 and 16? Honestly, I don't do OCT in people less than 18 years because there is no normative data. And then one thing about glaucoma in, in children is that you can, in younger people, the high tension glaucoma, you see pressures and, and, and everything. But let's say somebody is interested in the absolute value, you want to see the absolute value, like the mean retina fiber, you don't care whether it is compared with the normal or not. But the OCT is done in such a way. Hello, Dr. Sedik, we can't hear you anymore. Hello. We lost we lost him. Okay. Dr. Baturi, please can you help us check if there are more questions on the other on the YouTube. 
Yeah, I think that was the last question. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't interpret. Okay, we have like we have like two questions. Let me copy them. Yeah. I hope you will join us. So we're just waiting for him to join back. Okay. You, you can see the two questions, right? Yes. Hello, sir. Um, sir, please, can you unmute? Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So we have um, two other questions. How do we interpret the disk values when the disk area is more than 2.5? When the, when the disk value is more than 2.5. Yes. Now, you see, um, you all know that when the disk is like, the curve is going to be large. You see, the whole idea is the diagnosis of glaucoma. You put everything together. The optic nerve rate evaluation you are seeing clinically, the OCT, the CDF, and everything. Now, if you see somebody who has a large disc, and maybe you have done fundoscopy in the first place, and you saw that the patient has a CDR of 0 0.7 or so, and now you think the person has glaucoma, and now you order for the OCT. And then you did the OCT, it came out the patient has a large disc. Now, if every other things is, if every other things are okay, then it means the patient has a large CDR as a result of the large disc. So you can see it help you in this context. Now, if somebody is a myop and has three heart glaucoma and has a large disc, it's still you can go ahead, but you just need to know that um, somebody with a large disc and have a large CDR is not the same as somebody having a normal sized disc with the same CDR. So if somebody has normal disc with CDR of 0 0.7, another person has a large disc with CDR of 0 0.7, they are not the same. The one with a normal disc and large CDR is, has more damage than the other person. So everything is put into consideration. You also look at the CDF results and then see and put everything together. And that is the kind of patient that you can depend on and the macular ganglion cells. You put everything together. So that's it. Is you put everything before you and arrive at the conclusions. You don't use just OCT alone, but it give you an idea in your clinical judgment. Okay. Then another question is, what are red and green diseases? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the person will ask. So look at the example of red green red disease, like this guy now that has a, a poor um, 
So in red disease, it, it still tells you that um, somebody can have red areas, but he doesn't have glaucoma. Another person can have green areas and yet has defects. Now, there are causes of red disease and there are causes of green disease. One of the causes of red disease is macula, um, high myopes who already have degenerations. Now, their degeneration may not be due to glaucoma, but may be due to the macula. So therefore, this is an example of red disease. So you can't just say, oh, this guy's glaucoma has sectors, so many sectors are red and all that, you know? And then example of green disease is somebody who is hyper or or somebody, uh, you see, when, 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 when there's a symmetry between the two optic nerve head and the, the difference is not to the level below which the optic nerve norm, uh, below which the normal value stored in the system match it as abnormal, but it's still below normal. So, so those are the those those, those are the issue of green versus red disease, and then. In this thing, you, 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 you look at your clinical judgments, evaluate, look at, study the neurotherapy carefully. I think we've lost him. Yeah, I think uh, there's so much uh, fluctuation of the network. All right, thank you so much. Dr. Binti, you may wish to round up, but remember to call Dr. Easy. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much, sir, for <clears throat> this presentation. Thank you all as we've come to the end of um, this um, fortnight session. We look forward to having the second session next week. Um, I would like to call on Dr. Aze to... Unfortunately, he has left the meeting too. So he has left the meeting. Yeah. So we will bring you the next episode of OCC in glaucoma, as highlighted earlier, for monitoring and also OCT and geography in subsequent weeks. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, sir, for this session. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss.